Casey Planners. It is Saturday and I wanted to tell you about a book I just read called The Other Half of Happiness by Aisha Malik. This is a sequel to a book I read last year called Sophia Khan is Not Obliged. And that book was about a character named Sophia Khan who is in her early 30s and is on the search for Mr. Wright. And that book is funny, problematic, lots of different feelings I have about this book. But this is a sequel called The Other Half of Happiness. And when I found out it was being published, I realized it wasn't available in Canada. And the publisher was very, very kind to send me a copy because I just had to know what happened to this character. So this book is about now Sophia Khan has found the person she wants to be with and what happily ever after looks like for her and her husband. There's lots I like about this book. There's lots I don't like about this book. And I wanted to talk to you about both. So to start off, I love the cover of this book. Like Sophia Khan is not obliged, the publisher did not disappoint with this cover either. It has no lazy stereotypes about marriage or Muslims or women or anything like that. It's just, I think it's them tying the knot, folding the, the rope together. And it has no spoilers, but you see one hand, someone with beautifully manicured nails, um, brown hands, and then someone with white hands who, and there's four leaf clovers and, and they're just holding this, this string together. I really like this cover. I think it's bright and beautiful. And like Sophia Khan is not obliged, I would pick this up off a shelf just because of the cover and want to learn more. What I also really liked about this book is that Sophia Khan, like the first book, is still staunchly Muslim. So this book has things about Islam that are kind of just peppered throughout the book. When it's time to decide whether she wants to marry her husband or not, she prays is the Kara prayer, the prayer of guidance. When she's stressed out about the relationship, she goes into Ittikaf, which is a spiritual retreat that happens in Ramadan. When she's feeling really frustrated with him, she thinks about forgiveness and what Islam teaches her about forgiveness. It's not preachy, but Islam is kind of sprinkled throughout this book. And it's one of the rare times where you meet a character that isn't Muslim and reluctantly Muslim, but she's Muslim and wears red lipstick and has a matching scarf and does all that stuff at the same time. So I liked how comfortable she was with Islam. The other thing I really liked about this book is because Sophia is now married in this installment of her story, the book has a very different tone. So it's her trying to figure out what is marriage, what does it mean to be part of a union, what does it mean when you thread two lives together. So she reflects on forgiveness, she reflects on purpose, she reflects on her purpose both inside the marriage and outside the marriage, and reflects on how hard marriage is because now she's invested a lot more of herself into one specific person. It's a different kind of hurt and a different kind of heartbreak than she experienced when she was just looking for Mr. Right. Now that they are a unit, the capacity for hurt and heartbreak is a lot more. It's not a nice way to treat books, but I have all these folded over pages of just little moments of reflection that I thought were really beautiful and I had to think about further. I also really liked this book isn't just about her relationship, but it's about other topics as well. So Sophia is in the publishing industry and you see in this book, there's comments about the diversity or lack of diversity in the publishing industry. There's incidents where she's promoting her first book because in the first book, the character's also writing a book about Muslim relationships. So it's very meta. And so when she's doing press in this book about her, that book, she gets asked not just about her novel, but about global politics and what it feels to be Muslim in the world today. And is asked to comment about things that are really, she's not qualified to comment on. And I like that that was part of this book. I also just generally loved that you have this character that's Muslim and in a romantic comedy that is funny and light at times, serious at times, but it's, it's a genre that doesn't have a lot of diversity and I love that this book exists. So I would recommend this book just for that fact. It's a good book, it's a funny book, and diversity is sorely needed. Having said that, this is not a slam dunk book for me. And there's things about this book that I didn't like, even though I wanted to just love this book on a five star level. I wanted to give this book just rave, rave reviews, but I couldn't because there were some structural problems with this book. So the first thing is, and I don't know if you can see this on camera, but the book is structured the same way the first book is. So you have dates and then you have timestamps. So the book is kind of like 720, 722, 723, and it goes sort of in a, in a timestamp and dates type type way. And it also has chapters by month. At the same time, she's also trying to write a book in this novel. So you have these a few pages that are from her new novel. Because there's a lot that happens in this book, I don't know if the structure necessarily serves the plot very well. And the structure is challenging on its own because it feels sort of jarring. But this book also has a lot going on. And I think both of those things are weaknesses of this book. The structure and also just the sheer number of things that happen in this book. There's things happening with Sophia's mother. There's things happening in her marriage. They're moving countries. They're thinking about purpose in marriage. They're thinking about 
things are happening with her friends. Like there's so many characters in this book and there's so many elements and moving pieces. It's hard to keep track of it all and it's distracting and detracts from your reading experience. If this book was just about, oh my goodness, I'm in my mid thirties, I just got married, what does this look like? What does this mean? Ah, there's a man in my house, in my apartment. That would have been a story in and of itself. But this kind of has that, sort of small layers, but then it also has all these other elements and you're left just wanting the one story. Having said that, there are, there are more characters in this book, but there are also more diverse and representative characters in this book. So one of my problems with the last book was that there were no positive South Asian characters I felt in that book. This one, there are positive South Asian male characters and you do leave the book with a sense that yes, not all South Asian guys are jerks and people fall on a spectrum. So that was a good thing, but still I felt like there was too much happening in this book. I also, sometimes I don't like Sophia Khan very much and I feel like she, her character, the character swears a lot Characters sometimes overly blunt, um, indelicate. She smokes a lot, and there's just I, you don't. I wasn't expecting characters was exactly like me, but I I just found Sophia was a little hard to understand or or not very likable at moments. Having said that, her husband who I didn't really get in the first book, and for parts of the beginning of this book, I still can see the chemistry between them. I got to like him more as this book went on, and he became more human, and I. I liked how love and relationship were shown in small moments in this book because that was really beautiful to see. In summary, I recommend this book. I think it's good for the characters, for the, the other half of happiness that it's showing, but I wish it told, tried to do less. I wish it had a different structure and I wanted it to be more. But having said that, it's still a great book and I highly recommend. Till next time, this is Seriously Planning and this is the other half of happiness. Do check it out. Bye!